you very much. Thank you. Um, before we get to uh, administrative, we had our joint meeting with the Board of Education last Thursday. Uh, and at that time, a question came up that we sort of answered individually, but committed to uh, uh, some sort of public affirmation. Um, and so uh, the question that arose was whether or not the savings that were accumulated uh, from whatever potential uh, changes there are because of, by virtue of the uh, boundary line adjustment uh, and uh, potential school closings, that if there were savings derived from that, that those savings would stay within the school system. So this was my understanding of it. So um, I think just in terms of going forward and understanding kind of what they're doing and projecting and things like that, they were seeking some uh, affirmation of that. So we, uh, I believe, committed to, to take a vote to, to make that kind of official as opposed to just the, the roll call we did uh, there individually. So, uh, first of all, is that a good understanding? I mean, is that what you guys felt like we had talked about there? Yeah. Second of all, um, Mr. Burke, are we okay to do that now, or is that something that we need to? Yes, it's an action that has to take place at a public meeting, that's all. Okay, all right. And um, so does someone want to make a motion in that regard, or? I'd like to move that the um, savings the school system uh, makes in their Boundary readjustment stays with the school system. The funding for that, for their, uh, for their use. Is there something worded um, appropriately there? Sounds good. Is there a second? Second. Okay. Okay. Discussion. Yeah, I would just like to add to your motion. Just not only boundary readjustment, but closings of schools, just to make it clear. It's not just. Oh, yes. well, it's the boundary yeah, yeah, I know. Just, just going to have it. Yeah, yeah, like actually, could you, could you, could we restate that motion? I withdraw my second. Would you restate it, Commissioner uh, uh, Fraser? Is correct? Yes. Uh, just to restate that, or I'm going to restate that, that the school system will retain the monies they uh, save in the uh, boundary readjustment committee and the closing of uh, of buildings, or the uh, decommissioning of buildings. That's the money will stay with the school system. I'll second. Okay. Now, <clears throat> I'm going to make a comment about this. We have a large gap to close. Okay. The trajectory of this was evident several years ago, so there's no surprises here, at least not for me. Um, I want to make it clear that. There are some fundamental principles of good management that are being followed by this board, and I appreciate what this board is doing. And uh, I made it very clear to the school system three years ago that if they weren't doing the right things to get their cost structure under control, I was not going to increase spending in order to institutionalize excess and waste. But I want to explain to the citizens that what's going on right now is the school system is taking on a horrendously difficult task of trying to downsize and reduce their cost structure. And as, an exec as executive managers, when they're doing the right things, it's incumbent upon us to behave in a way that rewards that behavior. And that's why this is necessary. And that's why I'm supporting it. Okay. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think that, uh, and I don't want to rehash the past, but I want to make it clear. The last board was not clear that any money saved by the school system would go to the school system. Matter of fact, that was hotly debated, uh, which is part of what some of the consternation was back then. Also, um, you know, this needed to be originated by the Board of Education, and I think the fact that the, that's where it's coming from, and it's tied to a much bigger objective, and that's what people need to understand. This isn't about closing schools for the sake of closing schools. It's not closing schools for the sake of, uh, you know, how many seats we have and things like that. There's a fundamental issue, which is Carroll County has got to be committed to having uh, the best school system that we can possibly have and hopefully the best school system in the state of Maryland. And trying to accomplish that, one of the biggest hurdles we have is too much money is tied up in our fixed costs. And some of that is because of the state formula, and some of it's because of decisions that were made both by 
boards of commissioners and boards of education. But the <laughs> bottom line is, as you have declining enrollment, these fixed costs don't go away. And so one of the things that I think is, is uh, important for folks to understand, even as they're talking about not wanting particular schools to close or uh, different challenges that we have, is that really there's only a couple of places that we can get funding from to bridge what is a huge gap uh, relative to uh, the things we need to be investing in, most notably uh, teacher compensation. And that is we need more funding from the state, but the formula right now is working against us, although there's efforts afoot to mitigate some of that. They're going to be looking for more funding from us, and they need to uh, um, you know, economize as best they can. So I just want to make sure people understand that with the sacrifices, whether it's sacrifices we're asking the Board of Ed and the citizens to make because of a school closing or uh, maybe going to a different school, which is very difficult, <coughs> sacrifices we're asking citizens to make by virtue of decisions we make uh, using funds or wh how we get funds or whatever, uh, but also from the state as well, the ultimate goal has got to be providing the very best school system uh, that we can, and these are all pieces of that. And so, uh, I just I hope that's not lost in the discussion as we go go forward. All right, we have a motion that uh, we. Uh, I'd like to. I believe I want to change the motion. The commissioner used the word "retained" by the school system, and I think that could mean different things to different people. I've, I've, I've drafted something real quick. It's the same thing. In at one level, it's a different thing at a, at a more fundamental process level. Um, are you okay with, with Just a suggestion that you would um, pledge to provide any money saved by the Board of Education as a result of school closings and or boundary adjustment adjustment to the Board of Ed through the normal annual budget process. That we, would pledge to, we would pledge what? Pledge to provide any money saved by the Board of Ed as a result of school closings and or boundary adjustments to the Board of Ed through the normal annual budget process. Well, and actually, what we're not we're not even providing them funding. What we're doing is not taking away funding. I mean, the, the funding has already okay. been, been budgeted, right? I mean, I mean, the fact is where their savings are going to show up is going to be savings on the operating end of what they're looking for. Okay. Uh, maybe to get to your point then, maybe what you want to say is that the commissioners will not reduce the school's budget because of any savings that they want. I think that's much more accurate. That's yeah. As a result. That's just how I worded it. Yeah. <laughs> so, Commissioner Racho, will you withdraw your I'll, second? I'll withdraw my second. Commissioner Weaver, can we uh, take another stab? Yes. Uh, word it. What the, he said. What he said. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So we're looking for a motion. So the, so the motion would be that we will not reduce uh, Board of Education funding uh, as a result of savings from the boundary line adjustment and or school closings. Is that correct? Right. Okay. So you yeah. make that as a motion? Yeah, that's so I'll, I'll, I'll second it, but I want to ask Ted for clarification. Sure. Do we need any here to what they were for? You know, suppose our budget were to, revenue were to come in below expected. Do we need any qualifications? Providing we hit our revenue targets, do we need to add that clause in there? Okay. Uh, well, I guess you, you could. I'm not sure it would be necessary because what the statement is saying is if they find a dollar because of these changes, you're not going to take that dollar away. That doesn't mean that the rest of the budget process doesn't still have to happen. Okay. Well, that's exactly what they're asking for is to have this put out there. Even if we don't have our business growth or whatever, we don't get as much money as we thought, we're still not taking money away from the school system because of money that they're saving. If they save it, they get it. That's what they want to hear. They don't want to hear, well, you know what? We were $5 million short on projected revenues this year. Therefore, we can't give you that $5 million that you saved. We're going to keep it for ourselves. They, what they want to hear is any savings or reduction in cost that they acquire because of closing schools or redistricting, that they're going to see that money stay with them or come back to them, however you want to okay, put well, that. The two of you are saying different things now. Very different things. Very Mine's different. much better, though. Well, <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I mean, uh, in, in one sense, we're talking about not taking money away, but if there wasn't enough money for other reasons that could affect future funding, and I think what I hear you say, Commissioner Frazier, is that that wouldn't affect future funding. 
it wouldn't affect their future funding because if, if they if they're saving ten million dollars because of closing schools and redistricting, they get that ten million dollars regardless of what happens on the, for our side. That's their money. That's I believe that's what they want to hear. And isn't that the intent of closing the schools? <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah, we, got, we have, actually. I'm glad. I'm glad that Roberta interrupted us. Thank you, Roberta. Because there's another ambiguity here too. As I think about this, is one of those things that's easy. I think we all mean the same thing. What we mean is, if the school system sh shuts down schools and saves seven million dollars a year, we're not going to cut their budget seven million a year. But are we talking? Let me. I, mean, I, had a, I, I said that wrong. I had to say it again. I think what we're all saying is, if they close schools and save seven million a year, it's not our intention to cut their funding seven million a year. But there's still an ambiguity because we're talking about cuts from where they are today or cuts from from possible planned increases now. Does reducing the rate of increase constitute a cut? Because I don't think that's what we're saying. <laughs> so we have another ambiguity. Could, can, I, can I suggest that we get, let Roberta and Ted draw this up and then bring this back on Tuesday for a vote? Because I, I think we got to get the language right. I mean, I, I think the intention is clear. If they save money, it's not our intention to turn around and cut their revenue uh, uh, per, uh, uh, in step with their, their funding as a result of those savings. But we still have ambiguities here that we need to clear Would up. Would it be identifiable? Does that make sense? I mean, to Commissioner Rothschild's point, would it be identifiable that we'd be able to say, okay, they closed X school, therefore we saved $5 million, and therefore they sort of get five million to the good, um, you know, when you're starting. I mean, would it be that identifiable? If I, I think we have a problem underneath yeah. the whatever words we have. I, I believe Commissioner Rothschild and Commissioner Frazier are saying different things now. I mean, Commissioner Rothschild is saying, we don't intend to penalize you for finding savings, but other things could happen that could affect where we end up. Commissioner Frazier is saying, the school system does not carry any risk on this. We are saying if you find savings, you keep the savings. So I can work on words, but I have to know what the board actually wants. Well, actually, if they're saving money in the closing of these buildings, that was money they can use for staff or ever, what they deem appropriate at that time, and it's been allocated to them for that use. It should be at that point. We're not going to ask that the money's returned to the county coffers at that uh, the, the, point in time. The question is, if we have $187 million projected for the, for the fifth year out in the operating budget right now, are we saying as a board there's absolutely no way, no circumstance imaginable or acceptable or that we would even consider, which keep in mind will be a different board, by the way, um, so I'm not even sure we can yeah. say that, but but the idea is even just in terms of expressing intent, that that $187 million is a floor regardless of what happens, or are we saying that um, if $7 million is saved by the virtue of school closings, then, you know, but for some other situation like a huge interruption in tax revenue or something like that, that that $7 million, we wouldn't look to that $7 million and say, okay, well, we've got savings there from X, Y, and Z. Yeah, and, and the risk here is that something does change for our revenue situation. I'm not making any argument here, just trying to make sure. All, all, <laughs> I like when you say that. <laughs> staying, staying together. You know, to say for some reason we suddenly find ourselves with $20 million less revenue than we, we thought we had. Are we, are we saying then that we don't fix that problem with anything that the school system say, that that is a, a given, or are we saying that's on the table? And that's why I need to make sure I have a clear message from the board what your intent is so I can come up with the Well, words. and I hate to say it, not to make your efforts uh, less relevant, but I think if we get that far, we probably don't even need something written. Uh, if we can express intent uh, correctly enough to get 
Well, yeah. I was just trying to make it extreme so it was obvious. No, no, I, just, no I, I get, I get right. it. But the difficulty here is, as you said, Commissioner Howard, I mean, we can't sit here outside of the budget process and commit for future years to push your boards, that, boards that there'll be no change to, to budget plans. They're right. going to change. Well, but we, have, we also have three years that we do control as a board. I mean, I think right now with the Board of Ed, as they're going through their process needs, is confirmation that um, the, the, the savings of the availability of funds by virtue of saving money from these efforts will not constitute money that we would tap into. That's your... I mean, well, I'm that's just saying, that's, that's where my intent is. Now, I mean, it doesn't say that in a catastrophic situation, although I, I think very soon thereafter they're also going to be looking for us to make a commitment to more funds, uh, because what they're doing is a piece of the puzzle, and what we hope the state is going to do is a piece of the puzzle. But then again, also, what we're going to do is a piece of the puzzle, <laughs> Uh, and what we're going to do is going to be in excess of what has been budgeted. But I think these are those are separate. I mean, we can talk about that sentiment even today, but it's a separate sentiment. But I think the idea here is, is that we will never have a discussion, at least as far as this board is concerned, that, you know, they save $6 million or, you know, so we're a little bit tight, so we can pick up a million of that $6 million and use it, you know. And at this point, I don't think we see anything. And I understand this can change. But I don't think we're seeing anything right now that would suggest that our revenue projections going forward are going to be short of where we thought they were going to be. I mean, I think we've seen some marginally positive signs that are not enough for us to say we're booking extra money. But I don't think we've seen anything yet, significantly anyhow, that says there's a suggestion that we're going to be looking at less of a projection. Would that be a fair... Uh, there, might really more, there might be a more concrete way to do this. What are we funding the school system at right now? 160 what? 168 last year, wasn't it? It was 169.5 or something. Yeah, 169.5. Yeah, 169.5. Thank you, Wiley. <laughs> <laughs> they are doing their contribution to your kids' uh, chart, the red chart here, that bucket. They're trying to keep that money into that fund to be used to I think so you, hit you that blue area. That the intent is not penalize them finding savings. I think the, the only question here is, are you saying that is an ironclad commitment as far as you can commit, or that it is subject to the possibility that something would happen outside of our plans? Well, I mean, I, I would personally say that given what we've seen so far, uh, that I would be comfortable committing to the fact that there will be no uh, lessening of the amount that we've projected uh, for them for uh, funding over the next three years that we can control anyhow. I mean, like I said, we can't really, I mean, as much as we used to try to do this on the last board, we can't commit future boards. Uh, and if we had only known what a future board might look like, we would have really known that we, we can't commit future years. Future but I, I would be willing to say that I'll speak for myself, that I'm willing to commit that I will take no action to cut them below 169.5 the next budget cycle or any budget cycle for the rest next three years. And, and uh, I will endeavor to the extent the budget permits it to build everything, to, 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 to make adjustments above that and not take them below 169.5. That's what my intent. What's not going to happen is I'm not going to go back and say, hey, you saved seven million, so now I'm cutting you from 169.5 down to 162.5. I'm not going to do that. Right, That's but my intent. But if we're supposed to be at 175 three years from now. Your, your county plan is 178, 181, yeah, we, we, and 184. We, in the we next can't commit budget. to that. We don't know what the budget, what the revenue is going to be two years, three years out. We can't commit that we're not going to make any changes from, from the budget. It could be higher, it could be lower. We don't know yet. But to sit here and, and try to commit to that is a different issue than committing that we will not penalize them. I will not penalize them. The starting, the, today they're at 169.5. If they save seven million dollars, they'll still be at one sixty nine five next year. That's my intention. Well, well, then your, that's as worse far than as I can right, right, that's worse than the deal they have now. Well, as a minimum, yeah. right? Then that's to penalize them because next year is not supposed to be one sixty nine five. It's supposed to be one seventy eight next year. So if you're saying won't go below one sixty nine five, you're not telling them anything. We don't know if we can do that though. We don't know if we'll be able to give them eight million next year. Would we you, only did it this year through a very difficult set of processes I won't get into because it's going to be it does, uh, it's going to be uh, country, country. but they're able to retain or keep that money maybe retain the wrong word there into their budget 
if they if they produce the savings from it from well, closing schools. That's all they're asking. They close five schools and they say projected seven point two million dollars. And we come back to them next year and say that's a great job. Here's your one sixty nine and a half again. <laughs> I mean, that's not uh, what I'm saying. I'm simply saying we're not going to penalize them. Now, what, that doesn't preclude them from getting increases either. But we can't promise to a, a year out, two years, three outside of the budget cycle that things couldn't change. Could go up, could be down. We could have more revenue, less revenue. Suppose revenue comes in 2% lower. We won't be able to hit the 178. We, we just can't sit here and, and, and tell them things that we can't do. What we can promise is they will not be penalized. Well, those are things we can do. Depends on what steps we, we want to take. Well, that's what, what you're saying is you don't want to take those steps. No, I'm saying that you can't make commitments when there are variables that are going to impact us that we don't control. Well, I mean, state funding can't impact us because that would impact them, right? I mean, I mean, state funding for education at least goes directly to them. So, I mean, other than revenue, or maybe potentially some large hidden costs that we're not accounting you know, or couldn't know about or whatever and what we're talking about is revenue coming from us what i hear you saying commissioner frazier is we have a hand in what revenue is yes so uh, we sure do we don't. i'm not so sure that we do that do we well we said the tax not. rate so yeah we well, do. check the tax rate i mean all they're asking is simply not budgets to be able to make make some savings if we, you know, we give you an allowance of a quarter and you're able to save 20 cents of it, are you able to keep it or you have to return your allowance? The question is, though, are we going to be able to identify specifically those savings versus uh, any other operating expenses? You know what I mean? In other words, let, let me. Well, wait a minute. That's because I think there, there is a distinction. And so, I mean, I think if we're not committing, I, I mean, let me, let me put it this way. If we're not committing to where we put them in the operating plan, subject to, you know, whatever discussion we have in the next operating plan, but right now we have a five-year plan that says this is where we're going to fund them. If we're not committing to funding them at that level with no disruption because of what they're going to do with school closings, then I think we're being awfully... Uh, weak as a board when we're asking them to be very strong. Yes. We've asked them to go down a path. We'll stand with you. We want you to be strong. Frankly, I think what they're looking for us to say is at some point, we're not there yet, but if we save $7 million from closing schools, you'll meet us with more revenue comparable to that, maybe not the same amount. But the fact also is if you look through four years out, there's going to be a point where our extra effort above and beyond what's planned right now is going to have to be greater than what we get out of the the, uh, the yellow bucket, what the state gives us above and beyond where we are, unless something tremendous happens with the formula, but also going to have to be more than what's going to be able to be generated even from the Board of Ed Savings because th this is a this is a one-time adjustment, really. I mean, they're not going to be able to do this every year. So when we start talking in out years of $25, $30 million, if we're going to get anywhere near that, the state's going to run out of, I mean, the state's not, well, the state's not even participating right now other than trying to keep them from going negative right this second, which hopefully, you know, we can do that. Maybe maybe we can get it a little bit positive and then a few years better than that. But at the same time, if we can't, uh, the, the Board of Ed's going to have a limited amount that they're going to be able to do. This effort right now is going to give them more up front, but it's going to level off pretty quickly in terms of where they're going to find the next couple million dollars I would I would think maybe, so. if I, maybe it's just a simple statement <coughs> you're in the board's intent not to penalize as you said not to penalize them for any savings they realize as a result of these actions and just try not to say you know what add you know related to operating plans or their proposed numbers does that is that where it's simple and, and straightforward? It is, I believe, it sounds well, like from all five of you, your intent not to allow the, you know, to allow all that money to, to be used for the school system, um, you know, in the next, in the next yeah, several years as they, you know, as they realize I, I, their savings. I agree with that, Robert. And, and I, I thought this was, I think, well, I think all of us thought this was going to be a simple, simple a ministerial <laughs> Just a, just uh, uh, right. motion that we got all passed, but this is starting to 
uh, get into an issue of very serious public policy. And whether we make an intention, we're not going to we're not going to penalize them. That's one thing. That's not my intention to penalize them for doing the right. But to start getting into uh, stronger motions that suggest we're going to tie our own hands and possibly even force ourselves into tax increases three or four years from now, if we don't have that, that's a public policy issue that needs more discussion than a, that's not ministerial anymore. That, that needs to be on the agenda if we're going to go there. I can go with your language, which is it's certainly not my intention to penalize them for closing schools, but I'm not going to go so far as to suggest that we're going to lock ourselves into the current five-year plan because we, there's too many variables we don't control. There could be expenses, revenue interruptions. We don't know what's going to happen. And that's a public policy decision that needs to be on the agenda if we're going to go that far. We can put on the agenda, but I mean, I won't go that far. Well, you're not going to go that far anyhow. So the bottom line is this. We have an operating plan that we've adopted, right? Right. It's a plan. So I think that's what I said. We have an operating plan that we've adopted, right? Right. Okay. So until we go through another budget session, that is the plan for the next five years, right? Yes. Okay. So I think the suggestion today is with that plan as the standing plan, um, that any adjustments that they make as a result of what they're doing right now, it does not alter that plan. Is that fair to say? Yes. Yeah, that's exactly what they want. I think at this point. I mean, our plan has not changed and will not change by virtue of what they're doing. But other, but other issues could cause that plan to change. Well, you can say that, <laughs> but, but I'm telling you, if we, have, if we are if we're willing I'm to ask... I'm counting the tax increases. Okay, well then, you know, I think it's, it's very heroic to say we'll stand with you... Until. Until something right. bad happens. The the fact, with you in a good times is easy. The fact is, wait, wait, the fact is, we're asking them to make a major, irreversible step forward, and saying that that really, well, part of what I think the next discussion has to be from us, and it's going to have to be sooner rather than later, is are we willing to take a commensurate step forward? Uh, because if not, you know, we're not going to get there either. Uh, to, to do all this, uh, to do make this effort, to do all of what is being done, closing schools, readjusting, redistricting, all of that, and not get where we need to get to would be idiotic. I, I mean, really, wait, 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 hang on, hang on. Because I think we got to understand that as a community, we are making a commitment to go forward. We're asking the state to make a commitment to go forward. Governor's writing his budget right now. We're not saying, hey, let us know how things come out in the spring. We're asking you to go forward and find us money now. We're asking the Board of Ed to say, go forward and make these difficult choices now. And I think knowing what we know, which is we've got a plan that's balanced five years out, that does not suggest, and there's nothing that has suggested to us at this point that the funding or the, or the assumptions being made are not... Uh, sustainable. I mean, if we had evidence to the contrary, that would be different. That our intent right now is to execute the plan without any adjustment because of what the school system is doing. And I would argue that we got to come back and look at what possible upside there may be or other actions that we may take to get the school system there. But to ask them to go through this without even the commitment that we're going to be where we thought we were going to be. Now, I mean, obviously, if the world ends tomorrow, we're going to have to figure out what to do. I don't think there's any any th action we take that doesn't un that doesn't uh, consider that, and frankly, that's true of them as well. If they get some new mandate tomorrow from the federal government to provide, you know, uh, you know, pre kindergarten from the moment of birth, taking kids right out of the maternity ward, as I think Chuck Ecker said at one point, um, then obviously they're going to have a new challenge put in front of them, and whatever agreement they make is going to have to be looked at. Don't give them any ideas. Well, I don't want to do that, but <laughs> but I think to suggest at this point that we can't, can't clearly state that our operating plan is our plan, there's nothing on the horizon to suggest it isn't, and these actions will not lessen what they get from us, I think would be a mistake. I just wanted to say first. Before you do, hang on one second. Do you guys want to respond to that? They have, uh, they need 11 to $14 million, ever how you uh, define that number. They were looking to save seven million or whatever in the closing of schools. They just want a guarantee or a consensus from this board or a motion that they can retain that money to fund their uh, salary schedule for next year. That's what they're looking for. Did they? But 
at that point. So the money they save from this, they get to keep in the there. We're not going to put it back into the county funds to use for uh, anything else. Is what this amounts. I'm going to withdraw my second. And, you know that's and that's I'm, not, and I, I like what you said. See that I agree. We agree that if they save seven million dollars and want to redivert those savings to salaries, we support that. That's where I stand. That's that. That's what they've asked for. That's exactly what they've asked for, and I'm good with that. Right. And, and and if we as a board can't go beyond that, although we're not talking about that right now, we can't expect the school system to do all the heavy lifting and say, "Oh, thank you, you've done it all." We have to step to the plate with something of our own, although we're not talking about that right now. No. But it's something that what you alluded to. We've got to come up with something too. But if we can't agree at this time to say we have this. And from this board, three-year projection of what the school system, of what we're going to fund them at, and we're not going to deviate from that. We're not going to cut down from that because of savings that you're making. How can they make any projections? How can they go into their their um, negotiations with their teachers and the caseworkers and everybody else with any kind of numbers all to come back with? They have no idea then. If we're going to say, well, if this happens, that happens, we're going to change, we're handcuffing them. We're, we're making them unable to do what they need to do. We have from the last budget that we went through, projections over the next couple of years that we do have control over. If we can't say we're committing to that and we're not taking any money away from you because of money that you're saving 